started so we can have the most time we can with um, our partners with Redwood Credit Union. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Tiffany O'Neill, and I'm the Executive Director for the Sonoma State University Alumni Association. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, First Time, Next Time, Anytime, Your Mortgage Options at Any Stage, co-sponsored by Redwood Credit Union and the Sonoma State Alumni Association. Before we begin, I want to share a few housekeeping reminders. Today's presentation is being recorded and will be available to you after the program. A link to the presentation along with a post-event survey will be emailed to you after the webinar. We'd appreciate you taking a few minutes of your time to complete the survey and to provide feedback on the content of today's webinar. Both the chat and Q&A features are enabled. If you have questions related to the presentation, please go ahead and get them to us in the Q&A feature. We'll have time at the end of the presentation to answer questions that come through. If you have comments or technical issues, go ahead and input those in the chat feature for us and we'll address them when we can. I'd like to acknowledge this program was a collaboration between Redwood Credit Union and the Alumni Association. Redwood Credit Union is a wonderful partner with Sonoma State University and provides many opportunities to broaden the knowledge of financial wellness with our students, alumni, prospective students, faculty, staff, and community. I'd like to personally thank Redwood Credit Union for their collaboration and partnership in providing our community with financial wellness tools and resources. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ren Valentine, financial wellness advocate with Redwood Credit Union, who will kick off today's webinar for us. Ren is a Sonoma State alumna who over the past decade has been invited back to Sonoma State numerous times to share her knowledge of personal financial wellness topics. A few groups uh, Ren has worked closely with are our freshman year experience classes, SSU's academic talent search program, our EOP Summer Bridge students, and our faculty and staff. She has also worked on developing curriculum uh, with our School of Education to provide future teachers with the know-how to implement personal finance education into high school classrooms. Thank you, Ren, for your time and collaboration as well on this project. I'll turn the program over to you. Thank you, Tiffany. As always, we are so grateful for our wonderful relationship with SSU and the amazing things you all do to support our shared community. Uh, many thanks to all of you who have chosen to spend your lunchtime with us. As Tiffany mentioned, I am Rin Valentine, Redwood Credit Union's financial wellness advocate and a very proud SSU alum. And I'm happy to be here today with Laureen Barnes and Dustin Campana, RCU's stellar mortgage lending management team. Uh, so let's, we got a lot to cover today. So let's kind of dive right in. Um, while first time home buying is often one of the biggest moves we make in life financially and emotionally and so on and so forth, there are also other stages at which engaging with the mortgage process is beneficial, perhaps even necessary. Whether you're just looking at jumping into the mortgage market or if you're a seasoned veteran looking at your next steps to enhance your real estate portfolio, we're happy to discuss this with you at every stage. After all, a mortgage is not just a loan. It should be a solution to position you on your financial path to achieving a life you love. So with that, let's get started. Laureen, thanks so much for getting us kicked off today. Absolutely. Uh, my pleasure to be here and um, thank you so much. As Rin mentioned, we're so happy to be here and we're so excited to share information around home ownership. Kind of like um, Rin had mentioned, whether it be purchasing, refinancing, utilizing equity um, with a second mortgage. Um, we love to talk all things mortgage. So today, Dustin and I are going to be discussing the components that lenders consider when it comes to your mortgage or really any loan, um, known as the four C's of credit. So Dustin will be diving into that with you. Um, having a firm grasp on um, these different components will position you for success no matter what your real estate um, reality is. And we'll discuss some of the concepts that'll help you go in to the process feeling a bit more informed. Um, that always helps and it's a good position to be in. If you're already a homeowner um, or if you're looking for your next home, maybe you're looking for a vacation home, um, maybe you're looking at expanding your real estate portfolio, we're gonna cover some of the considerations that you'll wanna evaluate as you consider your options available to you. 
Um, also, with interest rates um, near uh, historic lows, I'm sure that's no surprise to anybody, um, you may be considering a refinance of your current property. So um, maybe you're looking to utilize the equity for another opportunity. We're gonna talk about what your why is and help you identify mortgage options to fit your needs. Um, we hope that your existing property is full of potential and serves you as a personal safety haven. And being able to take advantage of its equity can help you bring that potential to reality and develop the safety into a safety net for yourself. So we're gonna go through the presentation. Um, at the end, we will have time for Q&A. And if we run out of time for any reason, or if you think of questions, um, you know, after we're done here, uh, you'll have our contact information. And we are always available to you um, to reach out for any questions that you might have outside of this presentation. So thank you so much. Thanks, Lorraine, uh, for, for the little intro there. Uh, my name is Dustin Campan. I'm one of the assistant managers here. And uh, as Lorraine said, we love to talk mortgage or anything mortgage related. So uh, I'll dive quickly into the four C's of credit um, and just give you guys an, a brief overview of what that looks like. Um, uh, with, with, with credit, uh, we refer to it sometimes as character. Um, it's basically our way of looking into uh, your previous history. Um, and, uh, and, um, and the important part of that is, is uh, you know, it gives us a, a, a brief overview of, of what you've done. Um, so prior to applying, one of the great attributes is uh, you have the ability to go in to annualcreditreport.com and pull your credit. Um, this is something that I would recommend doing annually um, just to make sure that all the information on that report is true and correct. Um, another key feature is Credit Karma. You've probably seen things online about Credit Karma. It's a great way to monitor on a monthly basis just to make sure that, um, that the credit bureaus uh, have your correct information. Uh, if you are a Redwood Credit Union member, we do have partners at Balance that are also able, uh, able to conduct a credit report review with you. Um, and we'll further discuss and show uh, that contact info towards the end of the, the uh, meeting. Um, the second C would be capacity. Uh, this refers to your ability to repay. Um, we will be looking at uh, your debt to income ratio. And that's one of the, the biggest attributes that we will really uh, look into. So we will be looking at where your income is derived from, uh, where your debts are. Um, and so when we look at the debt to income ratio, the lower your DTI is, uh, the easier it should be for you to get approved for a loan. Um, if your DTI starts to push into the 45% or higher mark, uh, it does add uh, some additional challenges to qualifying. It doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the ballpark to be able to buy, uh, but uh, it just takes a little more uh, massaging, I guess you could say. Um, and uh, w while we dive into the, the debts uh, in that aspect of it, we will be looking at income um, and, um, you know, length of employment is, is one thing. Uh, if you're a, a newer uh, a graduate uh, and you don't have that, that long-term uh, employment, there are ways we can still get you in on a, on a home purchase as well. Um, the third C would be collateral. Uh, that is the property you're looking at buying. Um, we, as a lender, will look at using a third-party appraiser that'll come out and uh, give a professional opinion of value. Uh, it's a great way for you as a potential home buyer, as well as us as a lender, to know what the house is worth. Um, you typically don't want to be in a state where you overpay for a property. Um, so that's a, that's a nice little... Uh, side of things. Uh, the fourth and final is capital. This is known as your assets, your, uh, your funds in the bank. Uh, one of the big things that we will be looking at is with that, uh, with those assets is what kind of down payment do you have? Um, there are programs where you can get in with uh, uh, just a little bit of skin in the game, um, but the size of the down payment will definitely have an impact on the uh, monthly payment, which could potentially draw back into your maximum debt to income ratio. So um, we'll, we'll take a look at what that looks like. Uh, you'll also have 
closing costs that'll be tied into this as well. Um, everything from title company fees to an appraisal fee. Um, so not only your down payment, but you'll also be wanting to look at having some money set aside for uh, those closing costs. The final part of that in the um, capital side of things, it would be reserves. Things happen on homes. Um, it seems to be Murphy's law that within the first 30 or 60 days after you get into a house, the water heater goes out or if something happens with the furnace. Uh, you'll definitely want to have some money set aside for that so that you uh, don't run into those extenuating circumstances that then become a daunting task. So um, with, with that, I hope hopefully that kind of gives you a brief overview of the four C's um, in regards to that. I'd like to jump back over to Lorreen so she could talk a little bit on the first time home buyer side of things. Thanks so much, Dustin. Lots of great information there. Um, first time home buyers, Ren had mentioned it. Um, buying a house is a big deal. Um, whether you're buying your first home, big deal and congratulations if you're heading that direction. Even if you're buying um, a second home, an investment property, um, always a big deal and, and we wanna go ahead and go through that. So we're gonna talk a little bit about first time home buyers first. Um, as you plan, there are some pros and cons. Um, everything in life has its pros and cons. So we're gonna chat a little bit about that with you. Um, some people own, some people rent amongst other living situations. And there's clearly pros and cons to each. Um, but here are a few of the important components of being a homeowner. Um, we always wanna know what we're getting into before we jump in. So um, some pros, obviously your equity. Um, as a homeowner, your monthly payment is an investment rather than just a payment. So you're not um, contributing to your landlord's investment, you're contributing to your own. You're paying into your place of living, but also a place that's likely to increase in value over time, which you can choose to cash in on should you wish to sell if you feel the time is right, or you can keep it long-term as a primary residence or even move it to an investment should you decide to change your primary um, living location. Not only that, but you also have the ability to increase the equity of the home by making improvements as you see fit. Um, you don't need to ask the landlord's permission for that. Definitely a pro. Um, independence, you get to make whatever improvements you like um, at whatever time you like and whatever fashion you like. As long as you abide by the laws and ordinance, of course, you definitely wanna check with your, uh, your local county uh, restrictions and whatnot. Um, but it's up to you. You can make your property whatever you want it to be, just how you like it. Um, it's all up to you. Tax advantages. This is a big one. Um, not only, you know, are you investing in your own property and your own home for your future, you also get the tax advantages. So um, I'm not a tax preparer. And while nobody can guarantee, you know, exactly what taxes um, are, except the IRS, um, even they, they, change, they change things constantly. Sorry about that. Um, it's likely that you'll be able to deduct some or all of the mortgage interest from your taxes. Um, this can make your financial standing stronger than renting um, as you won't get such a um, deal from your landlord. And as we all know, we look for every tax break we can get when it comes to filing our taxes. So that mortgage interest write-off is definitely a benefit. And often um, you can talk to a tax preparer, your CPA, um, somebody that you might know that, you know, is an accountant and get an idea of what that impact might be to your taxes. And often that can help within your consideration of what monthly mortgage payment you're comfortable with. You might be going up a little bit from rent, um, but with the tax breaks that you might get, you actually can end up ahead um, at the end of the year. So definitely something to worth checking into. Cons, um, so flexibility, renting typically means that you're less tied to your home. Um, not always a con, but um, you know, gives you a bit more freedom, but also, you're able to kind of move around and, and you don't always have that stability. Um, month to month or even yearly lease provide a little or a more get up and go possibility. Also the landlord at any time can decide that he's or she is wanting to sell that property or make a change in their personal situation, which can impact you, um, you know, with, without you having a lot of lead time on that. Um, upfront costs. Um, while they're not always a con, they definitely weigh in on that side that you want to make sure you're aware and that you're thinking um, ahead with what the cost of home ownership is. So renting represents relatively small upfront cost, including maybe just your first and last month's rent, maybe a security deposit. But with a mortgage, when you're purchasing a home, your upfront costs include um, some sort of down payment and then closing costs um, and then additional fees that might be tied to the mortgage process. Um, 
later on down the line, Dustin, I think we'll be talking about a product that we have that will actually um, show you a no closing cost option should you be looking to purchase or refinance. There's not always closing costs. We can get around those. Um, let's see, upkeep. So the flip side of being a go-to person for any improvements you want to make, which is fun, is being the go-to person for any upkeep or maintenance that needs to happen. So instead of a single call to your landlord, you're likely to be making calls to friends and family um, and or, you know, vendors out there to ask service providers um, to get some quotes, get some help, come out and take care of some things that you need. Or you can always do the work yourself. Um, just a little side note to that. Um, home warranties are available and they're a great addition. A lot of real estate agents will speak to you about those and they do help with any unexpected repairs or challenges that might happen to a home um, so they can help with those costs. But upkeep is definitely something that you wanna consider and something that you want to um, be prepared for. So mortgage mindfulness, um, just like owning a car um, is about more than just its monthly payment. Owning a property encompasses financial aspects that can remain unknown, some of which we've just covered. So until you're the one handling them, you're not quite sure what they are. They're not all bad, but it's always good to have an idea of what might come up. So as you consider becoming a homeowner, look at every aspect, um, connect the financial ramifications, and then round up for good measure. So if you think something might cost you $2,500, round it up to three or 35, you know, just to make sure that you're prepared and you've got that little nest egg. Um, let's see, one-time expenses. Um, you have your down payment that we talked about, mortgage fees and closing costs. Those are all examples of one-time expenses with home ownership um, and when it comes to your mortgage payment. Then you have your ongoing cost. So um, have you considered a change in your utility cost from where you're renting um, a larger home to that of a smaller home when you're looking um, at places that you might want to purchase or you're starting to get your feeling for you know, what it is that you're looking at? Um, consider what's it going to take to run that home? Um, what's it going to take to furnish that home, um, the need to maintain the yard. Are you gonna need a landscaper? Are you gonna need a gardener? Can you do it yourself? Those are all fees and um, just considerations that you always wanna take and um, think about before jumping into something. Every couple of years you have maintenance like needing to replace a roof or painting the exterior of the house. And that can be costly. Um, they can definitely be a shock if you don't consider them ahead of time and plan accordingly. So you always want to have a nest egg for something that might come up um, for home repairs or something fun that you want to do to your house. Um, and then we talk about balance. So everybody's heard the term live work balance, very important in life. Um, that same approach falls true with house life balance. Um, for most, the home should be a comfortable place that you want to enjoy when you're not out living your life. Um, when you're evaluating a sales price or a loan amount and or a monthly payment, it's so easy to fall in love with that ideal house on the hill or, you know, in that exact neighborhood or, or that dream home that you have. Um, and often that'll lead us to say, well, I can afford this payment or I can afford this loan amount, even though it's out of my realm now, I'm going to have these future raises or maybe I'm going to have some roommates or I'm going to depend on this. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's planning and that's finding solutions. However, Owning a home is a long-term project. It's a long-term commitment. So are you going to want roommates for the next five to 10 years? Are you going to always have that job? So you want to make sure that you can still enjoy life while you own your home. So maybe it's not getting that $900,000 home. It's getting that $700,000 home, but you're comfortable with that payment that you're making. You know, you can always upgrade down the line. Um, but it allows you to be able to have friends over for that barbecue or take a vacation or enjoy that home or do a project without being so um, hand tied to that mortgage payment. So again, it's, you know, you do want to consider what the evolution of your current position is going to be and what changes might come into play for the next couple of years when you're, you know, thinking about your sales price and your loan amount and your mortgage payment but you also wanna make sure you're comfortable with that should any situations change. Um, again, just to make sure you've got that house life balance. So now when you're out looking, um, many of you might've heard this, that um, there's not always as much inventory as there is buyers. So you need to place yourself in a really strong position um, that your offer is going to be entertained. You're going up against many other people that are often writing letters of, um, personal um, 
identity. I've got a child. I want a house with a white picket fence. I'm going to take the best care of that oak tree that you got in the backyard. You know, they're, they're pulling on those heartstrings and they're turning it personal. And you want to make sure that you're in a really strong position um, to submit a successful offer that will be entertained. So that comes down to being pre-approved or pre-qualified. So uh, it likely means that you've taken the important steps in the mortgage process to prepare for your home ownership and um, to get prepared to make that offer. That being said, there's two concepts that carry very different weights in the real estate industry. The first one is pre-qualification, and that provides you with a sense of how much home you might wanna be looking for. So this will likely keep you looking in a selected price range, um, but it's not always looked at by the real estate community and or sellers as a promise of being able to obtain a loan, rather that you've gone out, you've done your homework, you've got a pre um, qualification and you know what you can afford. A pre-approval shows a seller and or a real estate agent that your lender's actually reviewed all of your qualifying documents, you've submitted an application, everything has been reviewed and that we've offered you a loan approval based on information that you provided us for the terms confirmed in that pre-approval letter. For example, a sales price, a loan amount, a loan term, et cetera. Um, a pre-approval is usually good for about 60 days and it remains valid as long as the qualifying factors don't change and that the property meets the certain criteria. Um, value is one thing that Dustin had referenced earlier, condition of the property, zoning, all that fun stuff about the property. So basically you as a buyer are completely pre-approved up to these um, values. And then all that's left is to look at that um, property. One thing, a tip that you wanna make sure of during your home searching period, um, or even for those of you that are gonna be purchasing a second home, a vacation home, an upgrade, whatever it might be, once you've entered into contract or even gotten pre-approved, you wanna make sure to avoid making any changes to your financial situation, like credit obligations, your employment, your assets, because you've been pre-approved on, on what you've submitted to the lender. If for some reason something changes, you definitely wanna let your lender know as soon as possible so you can get things updated. Um, I can't tell you how many situations we've had where buyers have gotten so excited to purchase a new car for their new garage or new furnishings to fill the house. Um, even the equi equivalent of like a baby moon that we all hear about, meaning they're gonna go take this big trip before they take on this home and they charge that vacation and all of a sudden their, their liabilities go up and that definitely can change your financial position and impact your pre-approval. So you always wanna be a little bit mindful of that. And then we have brokers. Um, I, I gotta give uh, Ren a shout out. Ren made these slides and her broker agent and realtors, oh my, it's just so perfect. Um, so unlike lions and tigers and bears, brokers, agents, and realtors are nothing to be scared of, but it can pay off to understand the purpose of each. So your real estate agents are professionals that help people buy, sell, and rent properties, and they have to work for a broker or a firm. Brokers are actually real estate agents with additional training and licensing, and they can work independently or have their own companies. And then you have realtors, and realtors are a real estate agent or a broker who is a member of the National Association of Realtors, and they have to comply with strict code of ethics. So um, you may run into one or all, and they're all wonderful. That just explains a little bit of the differentiation between the three. Um, and then when you're coming into identifying a realtor to work with, um, a home will usually have a listing agent. Um, that's already been provided. That's been determined by the seller. But you choose to work with a buying agent. Um, that's the agent that's going to represent you. So many prospective buyers receive referrals to a real estate professional from family or friends or even networking, um, all of which are valuable resources and really help to ensure that you work with someone that you're comfortable with. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, this is a, a long-term relationship. It might be looking at one house. It might be looking at 100 houses. And you want somebody that's going to represent you that you're going to feel really comfortable with. So those referrals are also valuable. Um, if you don't have a referral, that's totally okay. Um, the Home Advantage Program is a network of real estate professionals rooted in your preferred community for you to choose from and connect with. And it's a partner of Redwood Credit Union um, and we are happy to make that connection for you. So again, if you haven't already identified a real estate agent or you haven't been referred to somebody, we have a wonderful partner that we can refer you to um, of well-known, um, well-respected, um, service-orientated real estate agents. Um, it's a credit union industry program and the motto of people helping people is followed with each transaction and definitely through the Home Advantage program. And then upon closing, the borrower um, often qualifies for cash rewards 
Um, they can be applied towards closing costs, towards furnishings, towards some of those repairs that you're already thinking you might want to do. Um, sometimes averaging in the neighborhood of $1,500 to $2,000. So it's kind of a, a great program. But again, just make sure and do a little bit of homework when you're out there picking out your real estate agents and talk to your friends, talk to your family or talk to RC and we can help you as well. Perfect. Thanks, Lorraine. That's fabulous. Yeah, the, uh, the those added perks with some of those listing agents is always a nice thing, that's for sure. So um, let's talk a little bit about next time home buyers. So you've been through the mortgage process before, maybe even more than once. Um, sometimes that happens. Um, it doesn't mean that every mortgage is the same. So let's look at some of the next time home buyer topics that we often come across uh, on a daily basis here. Um, buying up or downsizing. Uh, what's new? Uh, your life may be very different from when it was when you first bought your house. Uh, maybe you have a spouse, kids, pets, or maybe it's further along in your life and now you're an empty, empty nester. Uh, make sure you update the way of thinking to go along with your new way of living. Um, maybe what's old. So uh, what are we going to do with that existing home. Uh, depending on your financial situation, your goals in the current market, keeping your existing property as a rental may be a smart financial choice. Uh, so it's a good idea to run some numbers and figure out whether selling or renting will serve you best. Um, and then the big one, what's next? Uh, your next home should be a comfy place for you to hang your hat uh, and to serve the goals that you have for your future. Um, so I call it the Ben Franklin method. Uh, start writing out your pros and cons of, uh, of your needs list and your want list um, that you want out of your new house. Um, consider what that will look like for 10, 15, 20, maybe even 50 years down the road, just to make sure that you have that, uh, uh, that perspective in place. Um, investment opportunities. So those that, that landlording side of things, as uh, Lorraine said, maybe, um, you know, um, you know, renting that home out, um, it's, you want to have a house where uh, tenants want to live. Uh, location, location, location. I know uh, with younger kids, it's, uh, they will look at, uh, potential tenants will be looking at uh, what kind of schools are in that district. So um, you'll want to consider and evaluate um, that in, in, in your options as well. Um, that way that you could become that landlord that uh, you have always wanted to be. Uh, qualifying criteria for investment properties is a little different than you will see on a primary residence. Um, you'll also want to key factor in, um, as Lorene was talking in her pros and cons of owning or renting, uh, being a, a landlord, um, any potential issues that come with that house uh, for maintenance and that aspect of it uh, will be directly impacting your pocketbook. So make sure that you have uh, funds set aside for that reserve uh, for the what ifs. Um, one of the best ones, vacay all the way. Uh, second homes, uh, be buying that property um, in those nice areas, uh, white sand beaches, palm trees, maybe it's close to a golf course. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, with buying a second home, um, things to consider are uh, the added expenses and how to mitigate and reduce those expenses. Uh, maybe you'll want to look at renting it or uh, maybe investing with an additional partner um, to, to help offset those costs. Uh, one of the main key criteria there is can you afford the payments if you don't have a renter for a while? Um, so just got to be mindful of those additional costs. Um, it's always, it's, it's always something to, to think about. Um, then we'll look at the steps for home ownership, going from a novice to a real estate pro. It's easy as one, two, three, well, maybe all the way to seven. There's a couple additional steps within here as well, um, but just on a high level, we'll, um, first step, as Lorreen said, you'll want to get pre-approved. Um, and uh, as she also went on to say, you'll want to find a real estate agent. Um, interview some. Um, as Lorene said, you might be looking at a few different homes and you're going to want to partner with somebody that uh, will be looking out for your best interest. Um, third th step, you just found your, your, the home of your future. Um, that means you're going to be putting in an offer. Um, to the seller, hopefully that seller will accept, uh, get you into contract, and then that's where the the fun begins with uh, a an, uh, a lender helping um, you through that whole financing process. 
within the financing process, you'll have some opportunity to get some inspections done for yourself, home inspections. Uh, one of the one cr key criteria that I was speaking about earlier was ordering an appraisal. That's where your lender will order an appraisal. It will be a third party professional appraisal. Um, and, uh, you know, that will tell us all a little bit about the property. There are eyes and our ears at that property. Uh, then you'll get your final loan approval. Um, and from there, you go to the signing table. Uh, that's always fun and exciting. Uh, I've been through it a few times myself and each time I still get the pitter patter in the heart, um, signing those loan documents for the next exciting uh, chapter in your, in your, in your life. Um, And back to me, uh, <laughs> rate, rate revitalist. So um, refinances, um, a big topic right now. It's all over social media. It's all over the news. So let's talk refinances for those of you that own a home and uh, maybe you're looking to make some changes. So why refi? Um, there's actually several reasons. It's not just as simple as looking for the best rate. Um, so first and foremost, uh, improve your cash flow. Um, lowering your rate, interest rates may seem fickle. They go up and down. There's no guarantees, but payments um, that the lower rates lead to aren't. Um, those are definitely a benefit in improving monthly cash flow. You want to get your money's worth by ensuring that you're getting the best rate and value that fits. But remember, you want to always keep in mind that rates need to be balanced with service to ensure that you're well taken care of by your lender if the need arises. So, you know, we see things all the time about a 1.99 or a 2.25. We can get lost in rates sometimes and forget about the service that's tied um, to that mortgage lender that you're going to have. So make sure when you're evaluating rate that you um, definitely consider what lender you're using um, and um, what those services are. Are they local? Is your servicing going to be sold? Are you going to change lenders throughout your um mortgage, those are all things you want to consider. And I often suggest, um, ask when you're talking about rate, ask your mortgage broker, what is the difference between two and a half and two and three quarters? That two and a half sounds great because it's a great rate, but in all actuality, depending on your loan amount, that payment might not be significant. And you can stay with a local lender or you can stay with somebody that you know. So um, while rates are important and can offer improved cash flow, cash flow want to make sure that you combine that with service and, and what you're expecting from your mortgage company. Um, another reason is to extend your term. So when you refinance, you're going to start your amortization term over. So if you've made three years or four years or seven years worth of payments, when you refinance, you're going to start a new term. So you want to take that into consideration. If you're 15 years into that term, you might want to look at a 15-year loan. Um, so that you can, you know, stay on course um, for improved cash flow. You can extend that term out a little bit. Um, decreasing your loan term is what a lot of people do, kind of what I just mentioned. Um, how great would it be to pay your mortgage off earlier than you originally projected? Refinancing can add structure to your plan to decrease interest paid um, to accelerate your pay down. The overage will be applied to your principal balance to save thousands of interest paid. For example, if you're comfortable making your current payment right now and you're just looking to reduce your interest and get your loan paid off sooner, you can obtain a refinance with a lower interest rate, but continue to make the payment that you're currently making. And that additional amount, if your current payment is $3,000 a month and your new payment's $2,500, that additional $500 a month, if you're comfortable making it, is gonna go directly to your principal reduction and can take years off of your loan and save you thousands in interest. If you're not comfortable with that payment and you're looking for cash flow, a refinance definitely will reduce that mortgage payment for you and get you more comfortable. Um, the plus is even if you make that higher payment, if something changes within your life, within your you know life situation, you definitely can go down and make that lower payment. So it gives you some options. And then last but not least, accessing equity. Life events happen. So maybe your child or you is headed off to college. Um, a lot of you have already been there, obviously, or you're starting a new business. No matter what it is, the equity you've built in your home can help support you through any multitude of exciting life events with favorable interest rates. So instead of taking out personal loans or high interest credit card loans, you can utilize the equity and remember that tax write-off. Um, investment opportunities, low mortgage interest rates environment that we're currently experiencing, it's likely 
you get many one investment opportunities. Um, that those investment opportunities can out earn the cost of the mortgage interest significantly, whether it be another property, a business, whatever it might be. Um, your cash out refi could give you the leg up on that investment opportunity for the long run. Remodeling, you can make changes to your property um, that may increase the value immensely. Granny units, extra master suites. Um, such changes, even smaller ones, can be a great way to refresh your home, making it feel new again. and so much easier and more cost effective than a full move. Also, depending on the sales price and our inventory that's out there, often you can use your equity to make your current home the home that you're actually looking for without moving or doing a new higher sales price and changing your property taxes um, based on a new value. So lots of pluses to remodeling. And last but not least, debt consolidation. Such a win. Often we're paying 16 to 24% interest in credit cards. We've got this equity sitting. Um, so you can use your equity to do a debt consolidation loan through cash out um, or through a second mortgage, pay off those car loans, pay off those high interest credit cards. And again, it's going to save you thousands of dollars in interest. And you can pay, make those payments that you're saving on your debt to your mortgage if you'd like and pay that down quicker so you're not amortizing over 30 years. That's some great information there, Lorraine. Thanks so much for that. Um, and, and to dub, double up on that, um, maybe a full refinance isn't uh, the best option for you. Um, maybe uh, depending on the, the, the purpose of what you're trying to do, maybe accessing the equity in your property, um, it, it might be a little better vehicle to use a second mortgage. Uh, there's a couple different possibilities in in that aspect of it. So it's uh, it's a really good idea when you meet with your mortgage uh, officer to, to, to explore all options. So let's take a look at uh, the equity options that we uh, that you'll typically see out there. Uh, the first equity option would be a fixed second mortgage. Typically in these situations, these will have fixed rates. They will be single disbursement loans. Um, so these are great for situations where a lump sum of funds are needed. So debt consolidation is one of them, uh, maybe acquiring a, 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 a business uh, or a new car, that aspect of it. Um, so something to keep in mind. Uh, then we also have some home equity line of credit options that are out there as well. You can kind of think of these as you do a credit card. You only pay on what you use. Um, so these are good for long-term multiple draw situations um, uh, from, from, from that side of it. Um, <clears throat> with mortgage loans, um, it's not a one size fits all. Um, there's many nuances that come within a, a, a loan side of things. So mortgage loan options, um, there's, there's, there's numerous programs out there. Um, so it's, it, it's great to just get familiar, uh, with what those options are. Um, there's some great common ones that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. You hear them on, on, on the radio as well. Um, and, and so let's dive a little bit into those mm -hmm. um, real quick here. So conventional fixed rate mortgages, these are what we all, we, we're all known to see. Uh, typically you're going to see uh, these fixed rate terms. Uh, they range from about a 10 year, a 15 year, a 20 year and a 30 year fixed. I think most often we see a 15 year fixed or a 30 year fixed. Um, those, are, those are out there. Uh, second option you will see will be adjust, adjustable rate mortgages. Now these will have a initial fixed rate Rate period, uh, typically three, five, seven, or 10 years, and then the rates adjust thereafter. Uh, as Lorene mentioned earlier, uh, we do have a program. It is a 5-5 arm that does offer a no closing cost option. So uh, for those that have, uh, uh, that are cash strapped or don't have the added reserves, uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to get into uh, purchase a home uh, with, uh, with less down payment. Uh, there's some uh, government sponsored loans, your VAs, your FHA. Um, these have a little more, sometimes a little more flexibility for 100% financing or with FHA, maybe um, a property that might need to be um, fixed up. They're called 203K loans. So those are out there as well. Uh, then we have jumbo loans. Uh, these will be for loan amounts greater than 548,250 in our county specific here. Um, and, and uh, we do stay competitive from that side of it with interest rates and uh, it, it, on those. And then, of course, home equity loans or home equity lines of credit are, are another aspect of the, the loans that are out there for you guys. 
Awesome. Lots of choices. Lots of choices. Um, so just to kind of tidy up here, the um, tips for financing success. Um, at Redwood Credit Union, we're always proud to be your mortgage partner. Um, we take great pride in walking you through the process and take pleasure in knowing that we can be your trusted partner for your mortgage solutions, whether now or planning for the future. Um, we appreciate your relationship and will work continually to earn it every day um, from the lending process to future financial needs outside of mortgage um, as a whole. We're here for you for whatever, for whatever your financial needs are. Um, our friends, families, and teams live and work in the North Bay. Who knows? We're local. Maybe we'll be one of your, or maybe soon one of us will be calling you our neighbor. Um, we're here for you. We're accessible. We're always close by. RCU supports our communities and takes great pride in being here for our members when events occur that impact our, um, our lives. And I think that that's something that really sets um, us apart. And you want to make sure that, you know, from application to funding, from whatever your financial needs are, whatever mortgage solutions you're looking for, you want a lender that's going to be there for you. And again, RCU, um, I think, demonstrates that. And we take our partnership with our community um, very, very seriously and to heart and we will be with you the whole way. And if through the process you decide that something's not right for you or your situation has changed, that's 100 percent OK. We can pause something. We can stop it and we can be there for you at a later time. We can even help you with a plan to get you there at a later time. So maybe now is not right. I want to back out. I don't want to do this. No problem at all. Just let us know and we can help get you on the path for whatever your timing looks like. So we're here for you when you're ready. And then here's uh, here's a, uh, a great uh, spot for some resources. As I stated earlier, Balance uh, is, a, is a direct partner with us. Um, and, uh, you know, if there was credit report reviews, home ownership counseling, they do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and they're, they're, they're a true uh, partner for for us uh, for financial wellness. Um, then here's our contact for the, uh, the, the mortgage side of things. Uh, I do believe that, and I pride myself on uh, best in, in class service. Uh, you know, I treat every, every member um, as I would my grandparents um, and make sure that they're being taken care of. Um, and then as Lorreen was talking about the home advantage uh, connection as well as on, on here. So we, no matter what, if you're a member or not, we are here to help uh, and guide. Um, we've been doing it for quite some time and uh, I, I can't get enough of it. So I'm happy to answer any and all <laughs> questions. That's for sure. <laughs> Darn that mute button every day, I, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Laureen and Dustin. Um, clearly you are a wealth of knowledge and very passionate about what you do. And we're so glad to have you uh, working with RCU and, and our communities that we care so much about and that we wouldn't be around without. Um, for all of you on the call today, as you can tell, when it's done right, a mortgage of any kind is and, and for just about any purpose too. It's not just a loan, it should be a solution for you. We're proud to offer solutions meant just for you to get you closer to a life you love. And we are here for you all day, every day to try to make that a reality for you. So with that, we will open it up to questions. I know we've got a couple already in the question and uh, answer function. Uh, so we'll get started on that. But if you haven't yet put your question in, please feel free to do so. Um, so Lorene and Dustin, uh, what options are there to get rid of PMI, private mortgage insurance, that little <laughs> heckler that just takes up way too much money? How, how can somebody get rid of PMI? Dustin, go ahead and take that one. <laughs> okay, fa fair, fair enough. So, uh, depending on who who has who currently has your loan, but in most cases, um, there's a few different ways to do it. Of course, one of the most obvious is is do a full refinance. Not in every situation does that make sense, though, uh, especially if you're currently carrying a lower interest rate. Um, so, one of the things that we could look at um, is you could uh, just based on how long you've had the loan um, by paying down that mortgage, you are building your equity. So as long as it gets down to about that 78% uh, side of things, uh, we could get the PMI removed that way. Uh, the other option is, is to get a current appraisal um, and see where the loan to value ends up being. Uh, most servicers require 
you to have your equity stance at about 80%, well, 78 to 80%. So it just depends on who owns that uh, loan, um, wh where that will look uh, fr from that side of it. So hopefully that answers. Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, all right. We've got a question about closing costs. Great question. Uh, how are closing costs determined? Is there a rule of thumb for how much we should plan to have for closing costs? Great question. Um, so closing costs are, there's, um, let's see here. So there's lender closing costs, which could be points or, um, you know, discount points of surge rate. That's, that's a, a point or a closing cost. And the true closing costs though are third party um, uh, services. So you have title, you have your appraisal, you have your credit report, um, your recording fees and all those fun county fees. And uh, taxes and whatnot. So they do uh, go off of the loan amount. Some go off of the sales price. So they can range depending on what you're looking at. Um, they are all hard costs. They are actual costs um, outside of a processing fee or points that a lender might charge. Um, they range for refinance, probably in the 2,500 to 3,500 range. And for purchases, again, it goes off sales price. Um, so they, they do get up there. They can be in the neighborhood about $10,000 plus. Um, depending on where you are, but often on, on purchases, you can negotiate a seller credit um, from with your real estate agent and get a credit towards those closing costs. And then Redwood Credit Union actually has one of our loan products, our 5.5, that offers a no closing cost feature where we pay those for you. Um, so there's ways to get credit for those closing costs um, that you'd want to talk to your lender about. Um, and then there's also ways to get them for a purchase that you want to talk to your real estate agent about. If that didn't answer your question, please feel free to call me. <laughs> Absolutely. Or we, we do still have some time as well. So if you need further clarification, we can deal with that here and now. Uh, but for the time being, we're going to go ahead and move on to another question. Um, let's see, if you've purchased a home in the past, but then you sold it and you've recently been renting, what do you know? Can you qualify once again as a first time home buyer? Is there a, a time limitation between owning your last home and, and looking at a, at a new home? And can you be renewed and refreshed as a first time home buyer? Great. That's another great question. These are fantastic, thought provoking, and I love it. Um, so um, the answer is yes. Uh, from a time frame perspective, typically you're going to want to have 36 months in between. Um, so anytime uh, in between that 36 month and, and current, if you just recently sold, while you won't be considered a first time home buyer, um, it does not negate you from being able to purchase right. again in that aspect of it. So um, you know we would consider you as a first time home buyer again though after 36 six months from the sale date. And like Dustin said, even if you're not considered a first time home buyer and you're trying to get in with lower down payments, there's something for everybody. So just because you're not considered a first time home buyer, there's definitely solutions for you. Great. Wonderful. So we've we've also got another first time home buyer question, but uh, from from someone that's more advanced. Somebody is curious about would I qualify as a first time home buyer as a seventy year old? You know, a little uh -huh. bit more rooted in in the life journey. Um. So. Mm -hmm. And, and also as a part of that, can an applicant at that stage of life be, is, are, is there a path for success for someone at that stage in life? Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. Um, it's never too late to do anything, right? So you can definitely be considered a first time home buyer. Um, age has no restrictions. Uh, we've got all the same loan programs available. And what you're gonna wanna make sure of is just the qualifying. Um, making sure that you have an income source, whether that be social security or pension, or maybe you have stocks. Um, maybe you have a great real estate or I'm sorry, a great asset portfolio. And, you know, we can work with that. So it's just going to fall under the same um, guidelines as anybody else, any age, any point in your life that um, we just need to make sure that we can qualify with income. And there's all sorts of income sources outside of a traditional um, employment situation. So that's something that you would talk to um, a loan officer about. Um, but absolutely, come on in, let's help you out. 
<laughs> Wonderful. Great. Um, so we've got a question here and it just, it, you know, it speaks to my heart in so many ways, being in the market that we're in and uh, specifically for the SSU demographic. So I'm just kind of going to read it verbatim. Um, I'm a recently graduated young professional providing for a household of two, including myself. We desperately want to move into a house, but I'm so intimidated by the amount of cash it seems I need to have in reserve just for the whole process from start to finish. It feels like being a homeowner will always be a distant dream. How can I make, how can I feel more confident that it's actually achievable without having tons of cash in the bank already? Such a good question. Go Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> this one, uh, this, this, this definitely uh, is one that, uh, that hit home, hit home yeah. for me. Um, that's for sure. Um, while while the, the process itself can feel overwhelming and daunting, it's really good to partner with somebody to, to, to pencil it out. Um, yeah. you know, and, and sometimes, um, we, we get so afraid of, um, the, the unknown that, um, it, it limits us from being able to look at that as an opportunity. Um, there's, there are definite options, um, especially for recent graduates, you're early in your career, um, to, to sit down and, and, and speak about, uh, your current situation, um, and the opportunities that, that are present. Um, and, and as Lorene said earlier, if it's not today and it's not tomorrow, at least we can set you up for that pathway so that you have that success and we have some light at that end of the tunnel. Um, so please, please reach out. Um, um, we are definitely here to help pave that way, um, the golden path, so to speak. Um, it's important um, in my eyes. If I can piggyback on that just for one second, I know we're running out of time, but um, to what Dustin said is, is that if it's not ready now, still reach out, talk to a loan officer, give us a call and let's figure out, you know, what payment are you comfortable making and what does that look like? And what does that tie to as far as a sales price? And I think so many people can relate to this question. Um, even people that have owned a home or currently on home and they just want to take that next step. So we can work with you to figure out where you're comfortable, where you want to be back that into a sales price, back that into a loan payment with the down, pay what the down payments required. And then let's figure out a savings plan, you know, that you do or look at resources. You're allowed gift funds. So maybe you have a family member or somebody that has the ability to gift you funds, um, wants to help you, you know, get on your journey. Maybe you have several family members that want to do that. You know, we can look at that. Um, certain counties have programs of silent seconds, not a lot, but certain counties do have that. And that's a great resource as well as using that silent second, meaning there's no payment due on it for a period of time and or until you sell that home. So there's so many variations. So please don't let the fear of that stop anybody from coming and talking to us. And let's just see what we can figure out. Great. Um, so you were mentioning counties, uh, Lorene. Uh, does our, where is RCU's lending footprint in terms of mortgages? Can we go out of, out of Sonoma County and, and how far can we go with, with RCU mortgage? Um, absolutely. So we, uh, we have, we service the North Bay as far as membership. Um, so you have to live, work, or have a direct family member within the North Bay in one of our participating counties for membership. Um, however, we will lend in the whole state of California. So as long as you are a member and you qualify within our membership radius, um, we'll lend in the state of California. So if you're buying in Southern California, if you're buying up North, if you're buying out at the coast, um, we can definitely lend on that for you as long as it's within California. Great, great. Um, let's see. Are there any benefits for a first-time home buyer regarding the down payment, and would they still have to have that twenty percent down? And, and with that, as Lorene said, there's there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of options. Um, you know, as a first-time home buyer or just as a home buyer in general, you could get in with as little as three percent down. And in some cases, you know, you can use down payment assistance, uh, known as a silent second, uh, for certain qualifying criteria. Um, so you don't necessarily need that twenty percent down payment. Um, there are ways to, 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 to get in for less down. Um, and so I do encourage you to, to reach out. Um, you know, there's some opportunities, uh, like I said, we, I love to pencil out pathways, uh, to success. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes it's, it, it's more attainable than you think. Um, that's for darn sure. So, um, feel free to reach out, please. 
All right, good. This is an interesting question. So why do I see such different rates when I look at rates printed in the newspaper versus when I'm on Facebook and Quicken Loans is offering significantly less? What's up with those rate differences? Such a good question. Um, oh my gosh, this could be an hour long answer. Um, <laughs> in a nutshell, uh, every but there's there's always so to start. There's always going to be a variance in rates. There is. Um, it's if you go to Nordstrom's or you go to Target or you deal with a huge vendor that's just kind of pushing things through, or you deal with a small little boutique, right? And you want to find something, as I mentioned earlier. It's in the middle. It's not always about that 2.25 rate. Maybe 2.375 or 2.5 is going to give you local service. You can walk into a branch. You can call somebody that you're familiar with. You know your loan's not going to be sold several times um, throughout. So that can be a small a, a variance between rates. As far as published rates and what we sometimes call teaser rates or advertised rates, most people will go in with their lowest. Um, their best scenario, maybe it's a 50% loan to value, meaning you own half of the property as far as, you know, equity, you've got 50% loan to your value. It's the best FICO score. It's no cash out. So when you get into your actual situation of your credit score, your occupancy type, your property type, is it two units? Is it a condo? Is it uh, what we call a jumbo loan versus a conforming loan, meaning a difference in loan amounts? You know, is it over 500 and 40,000 or is it under? There's all these different factors. Um, truly, lenders tend to be within a quarter to a half in rate of each other, typically. Um, sometimes one might buy the market. Um, again, a quicken is um, nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, but a little bit more of a production environment. So you're online, you're doing everything, you're, you're pushing it through, you're getting your application, you're getting your funding done, you're getting your great rate. Um, your loan might be sold, nothing wrong with that, but you just need to know that your servicer might change. When you deal with a local lender um, or somebody that services their own loans, that's something you really wanna ask if that's important to you. Do you guys remain and, or retain the servicing? Am I always gonna be able to deal with you? That might be a difference of a little bit in rate, but again, is that important to you to be able to have that service, to walk into that branch should you have a question, to be able to call that loan officer you dealt with last time? Um, so I know that's a, a big question. I mean, a, a small answer for a big question. Last but not least, a lot of those really low interest rates that you see, a 1.99, a 2%, they might have what we call points associated with those. Um, and that means that that's gonna be on top of those closing costs we talked about earlier there's actually points to buy that rate, if you will. Um, again, not a bad thing, but it takes you a while to recoup those costs that you spend in those points in your monthly savings of that lower rate. So there could be points involved or different things. So you really wanna make sure and weigh them out side by side to really see service, points, cost, what all is involved in those rates. I hope that makes sense. Right. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, we do have two more questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you a softball here. I love this one. Do you have to be a customer of RCU to benefit from speaking with one of your mortgage team members? I'll take that one. I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Easy answer there is uh, we will talk to anybody. Um, yeah. You do not need to be a, uh, a Redwood Credit Union member. Uh, we do hope um, that, you know, you'll see the benefits within joining to be part of the membership. Um, but that is not a prerequisite in order to be able to talk with one of our staff, by all means, please call. Um, we are here to answer any and all questions. Um, and everybody on our, our team uh, loves what they do. Um, and so, um, yeah, but please, please use us. Yes. And, and if you don't mind, I'm going to tag along to that, uh, you know, as the financial wellness advocate at Redwood Credit Union, I am the first to shout from the roof, rooftops, come and talk to us about anything. Uh, doesn't matter if you're a member with us, it, it do, you know, we want our communities to be well. Yes, our first, our first uh, dedication is to our membership, but our members are part of our communities and the stronger our community is, then the stronger we can all be together. So mortgage, anything other than that, please give us the opportunity to talk to you. Um, it's, it's where our passion lies and why we're so grateful to SSU for inviting us for, for things like this. Um, so 
the final question that I've got up right now, and this is a little particular, um, does our CU ha offer home loan discounts or grants for teachers or Sonoma County employees? And if not, do they offer resources to for us to contact and collaborate with each other? Dustin, do you want me to take that? Do you want to take that? Uh, you you want to, I can jump off of, uh, after you if you need. Okay. Um, that is a great question. And that's actually a product that we're looking into. I know some lenders have what they call hero loans or different things for um, community service, firefighters, teachers, police, and whatnot. And that is something that we're looking into. Um, at this time, we do not have anything specific. Um, however, when you, you know, when you look at different career um that are involved in qualifying, a lot of times we can take different things into consideration. Um, and that's often what helps those type of um, industries is that we can look at different qualifying, different you know, pay um, methods, uh, overtime, commissions, summer schedules, you know, all those different things, we, we definitely can take that into consideration. But at this time we don't, but we are looking for it. So watch for that. Um, and as far as connecting you with other individuals, um, I'm not quite sure if you mean to collaborate as far as um, just ownership and mortgages, or if you're talking about connecting you with other individuals that um, offer those products. Um, either way, you could give us a call and we could help you with that. Dustin, do you have any more feedback on that? Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, if it's uh, if if the question wasn't answered, please uh, feel free to reach out so that we yeah. can make sure that uh, your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted, but uh, yeah. just know that we are here. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we are one minute over time, so I think that's a wonderful stopping point. Thank you to all of you that took time today. I hope you got a little lunch in your belly, but thank you for letting us feed your mind and your thoughts. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out at any point. We would love the opportunity to talk to you. Many thanks to Tiffany, to Chelsea, and to SSU for the wonderful partnership. Uh, until next time, have a great afternoon. Bye Thank all. you. Thank you so much. Thank you Thanks for having everybody. Us.